One of these has got to be the spell to keep MCP trapped in the Shadow Realm forever. Just got to find it. Hey, MCP! What's going on? Hey. I love the black jacket, the black mask, the new goggles, the whole look. It's so dope. Yeah, you, you look like a dope too. Uh, what can I help you with, uh, uh Vincent? Uh, happy Cat Halloween, by the way. Yep, yep, happy Cat Halloween. Uh, don't you remember why I'm here? We're gonna read from this new book that I'm featured in, Dark Places, Evil Faces. It's being put out by PS Publishing. Yeah, of course, I, I remember. I just, I can't right now. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of in, I'm in the middle of something at the moment. You're in the middle of something? You're too busy? Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'll get to it another time. I'm a little busy. You're too busy for McMillan Cancer Support, a cancer charity that provides support to people with cancer. Yeah. That doesn't sound like the MCP I know. That sounds like some sort of, I don't know, bizarro MCP or something. <laughs> No, I'm not, uh, but, uh, <laughs> of course I got time to do it now. Yeah? Yeah. What, did, what if I read one of these from, from this book, would you, would you believe that I'm, I'm the real MCP? I believe anything as long as it's not fake news. Okay, which, which, what am I reading? Uh, apartment 11. Apartment 11. Really? All right. <coughs> Here it goes. Fifteen years since I last left this place. A hundred and thirty-one hours, four hundred and eighty-seven minutes since I last saw the outside world. That's a long time. A long time to think, a long time to wonder, a long time for the human brain to create and invent. Scenarios. As flat as my sanctuary, and my prison, my curse, and my gift. The funny thing, the human brain, it contains 100 billion neurons. 100 billion divided by the number of years I've been stuck here is 6.6 .6 billion. 66 was the year I was born in a quiet little council house in Leeds. Leeds has five letters. Five times three is 15. The number always wins. They are always right. One hundred billion neurons within the brain. Several of mine faulty. Changed. Agrophobia. Its, its definition is the fear of being in open spaces or large crowds. I fit that description. But I, I have a good reason. See, my brain has somehow become rewired and forces its isolation on me. The one thing I, I felt forced to do in order to keep people safe has now entrapped me. Nature finds a way to keep, keep up the balance, though, and the thing it took from me, it replaced with something else, something special. I spend my days writing. When I have my weekly shopping delivered, I also request two notepads. I write at approximately 28 words per minute, which... Granted, is a little below average, but enough for my needs. I use pads of A4 paper, each of which contain 50 sheets of lined paper with a vertical pink margin line on the right. 28 subtracted from 50 is 22. And that's how old I was when the accident happened. That's how old I was when I got my... my gift. It was my age when life gave and took away in the cruel way that it knows best. I'll get to that in good time. Though, uh, first I have to go back. Back to when I was a child. Back to when I can explain how I came to be in this situation. I've told this story before. Countless times. It's within the notepads I've already filled. But, 
with nobody to listen, I see no harm in telling it again. It will at least serve to show you how everything comes back to the numbers. If nothing else, at least they tell the truth. Hmm? 71. 1971 in England, unemployment is at an all-time high. Arsenal have beaten Liverpool 2-1 in the FA Cup final. Scottish Formula One driver Jackie Stewart has won the Monaco Grand Prix. 1971. 19. 19 plus 1 makes 20. I was 10 when it started. 10 taken away from 20 is 10. Again, 10 is an important number. 71 minus the number of years since I left this place comes to 56. 56 is how old my father was when he first raped my sister. She was seven. For three years it went on. Seven plus three is ten, my age, when it all started. Ten is an important number. Thirteen is said to be an unlucky number. For my father, it was exactly that. Thirteen was the number of times I stabbed him. With the knife, as he mounted my beloved sister, one too many times, seven in the back, three in the side, three in the balls. For good measure. It took him eight minutes to bleed out. When he was begging me to stop, he said my name ten times. Ten is an important number. There were seven people at his funeral, which, as you know, was the same age my sister was when he started his vile attacks. Seven people there. Seven letters in funeral. An anagram for funeral is real fun. <laughs> real fun. It was what I had when I watched him die. Nobody cried at my father's funeral, not a single one. My father was a sick son of a bitch. Eight is the number of years I was in the psychiatric hospital after the attack. My doctor's name was Ethan. My sister was called Erica. Both began with the letter E. E is the fifth letter of the alphabet. Five times three is fifteen. Fifteen is the number of years since I left this place. Fifteen is also the number of minutes since I hit the man over the head who was trying to break into my home. Fifteen is also a very important number. Fifteen. I wrapped the rope around each wrist 15 times before I tied him to the chair. He's been unconscious now for almost 10 minutes. 10. 10 is a very important number. 10 from 15 leaves 5, 5 minutes until midnight, midnight. He struck at 12. Tomorrow is the 12th of the month. The 12th was also the date my sister committed suicide. She was 11. 11 when she decided it was easier to jump off the roof of a multi-story car park than have to deal with the psychological nightmares of what happened to her. 11 was how old she was when she realized that she was broken beyond repair. There were six people at my sister's funeral. Plenty of tears were shed. My sister was a beautiful human being. My father was 56 when he died. 5 plus 6 equals 11. 11 is how old my sister was when she killed herself because of what my father had done to her. My father mocks me even in death. The man who broke into my home is starting to wake. His eyes filled with that vacant half-focus of someone who had recently had his brain rattled. I look around and I see my flat as he will see it. The newspapers, which I have kept over the years, yellowed mountains, reaching from floor to ceiling and haphazard towers in every available space. A lifetime's worth of clutter exists here. A home no more than a rabbit run of corridors made from junk and clutter, which I can't bear to part with. I can't recall the color of the carpets. I can't recall the shapes of some of the rooms. It's a distant thing to me now. How this place would look without all those things I surround myself with. My intruder is awake now and moaning, blood starting to dry in thick clumps in his greasy hair. Looks like tar. I tell him not to scream. 
but nobody will bother us here no matter how much he shouts. I tell him to be quiet and let me think. He listens. Seeing in my eyes that I'm deadly serious, he knows I'm in control and does as he's told. At midnight. The birth of a new day. 12 times 2 is 24, minus 1 each for me and my intruder, that leaves 22. 22 is the age I was when I first got my gift, 22. 22 is an important number. My intruder is agitated and starting to panic and make noise. I ask him again to be quiet. This time he doesn't listen. Fear will do that every time. I'm forced to hurt him. I don't want to do it. But I have no choice. I imagine my father and his pale, bloodless face nodding in approval as I hit the man again in the head with a skillet, silencing these noises and bringing out a fresh torrent of blood from his wound. I ignore the mocking sneer of my dead father and the expression that says the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I ignore it and whisper my apologies to the unconscious man. Twenty-two. Twenty-two when it happened. Crossing the road, minding my own business. Not my fault. The driver was drunk. He claimed he didn't see me. It, it still didn't stop him from driving over and leaving me for dead in the gutter. Twenty. Broken bones. 22 minus 20 leaves two. There were two people in the car, just like there are two people here in my flat. 22 was my age when it happened. 22 is an important number. I don't remember the pain. I was beyond that. I remember the faces swimming in and out of my consciousness, their expressions telling me all I needed to know. I was in a bad way. I remember a priest. He gave me the last rites there on the road. I was dying. I was dying. But I wasn't afraid. I couldn't feel it. I didn't die. But sometimes I wish I had. Instead, I spent several months in the hospital. And rehabilitation. Seven was the age of my sister when my father first raped her. The same number of people who were at the funeral in which nobody cried. The word funeral contains seven letters. It's also an anagram for real fun. Real fun wasn't something I had during my rehabilitation. That's when the pain I was spared during the accident was delivered to me with interest. It was also where I discovered my gift. Depression is a real thing. Depression affects one in five people in the United Kingdom. One in five is 15. 15 is the number of years since I last left this place. One in five is 15. 15 is the number of years since I left this place. 15 is a very important number. 15% of all people diagnosed with clinical depression die from suicide. I slit my wrists on the 13th of October. 13. 13 for the number of times I stabbed my father when I decided I had to kill him because I couldn't bear to hear the sounds of when he was raping my sister. 15% of all people with clinical depression die from suicide. Now, I wasn't one of those people. My gift saved me. Although I did try. The pain as my blood spattered onto the floor. Bright red on stark white. The instinctive grip as I grabbed at the three inch cut that I had made on my wrists. Blood welling up between my fingers as I waited to be taken away from this awful place. And warmth. Light. Then my wound stopped bleeding, then my wound was gone. And then I realized I was still in this awful place. My gift. My curse. 
22 when it happened. Then 15 years since I left this place. Both very, very important numbers. 37. The number of years since I last left this place added to the age that I was when the accident happened. It was also the age of my intruder, according to the driver's license in his wallet. His name is Marcus. He has a picture in there of a smiling family, attractive wife and daughter who has his eyes. They mean nothing to me. Marcus. Marcus was the name of my father. My father is dead. I killed him when I was ten by stabbing him thirteen times. I had to do it to stop him from raping my sister. My sister was seven when it started, and ten when I stopped it. She died when she was eleven. My father and my sister are both dead. I didn't die. Instead, got a gift. The gift of life. A gift I don't want. I learned I could heal things by touching them. <laughs> Something in the... And the crash has reorganized my brain or triggered something locked away that humans have had but can't use. Whatever it is, I have it. My hands can sense illness, cancers, tumors, broken bones. I can, I can fix things. I can heal people. I tried to heal people, tried to share my gift. Nobody listened. They hit me, they spat on me when I tried to fix them. They scared me, they threatened me, called me a weirdo and a freak, a pervert, and a, and a, and a pedophile, all because I, I walked with a limp and I have these scars on my face and my body from the crash. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. And no one will listen. Nobody cares. And so I write it down, just like this, just like the other notepads there. They're stacked and organized by date. My thoughts, my feelings, all on paper. All like this one. Fifteen. Fifteen years since I last left this place. Fifteen years is a long time to be lonely. To be isolated from everyone. Through no fault of your own, fifteen is a very important number. Marcus is moving again. His eyes are glassy and roll into his skull. He looks at me, sees the scars, sees the place I live in. His eyes grow wide. He's afraid. Afraid of me. Afraid of how I look, judging me, just like them, just like the others. Rage. That tight knot of fire in my belly, it sits there and simmers like me. It's sick. Sick of the ridicule, sick of the mocking, the humiliation, the irony. That I might be sickest of all and can't cure myself isn't lost on me. I'm scared now. I'm scared of what's going to happen because I know I can't stop it. Two. The number of thumbs I push into his windpipe as the rage takes over. Fifty. The number of seconds until he stops struggling and takes his last breath. And I hope it... I hope that's all it will take. But the rage won't be satisfied. I know that. I have no power when it takes over. One. The number of knives I bring back from the kitchen still somewhere else, still controlled by that, that fire which has spread from my belly and has become an inferno. 33, the number of times I stab him, hacking, slashing. Even the feeling of bone grinding against blade can't stop me. It's only when the... The filthy knife snaps. The frenzy ends. 2, 51, 33, add together to make 86. 86% 86 of all murders in England and Wales are committed by men. I'm a man. I'm a murderer. I also have a gift. It's been 15 years since I last left this place because I killed my father when he raped my sister. She was 7, 30, 30 minutes it takes. My hands dance over the man's body, closing wounds, repairing skin. 
tears hot on my cheeks. I don't want this. I don't want any of this. I don't know how it works. It just happens. I don't put back what's gone. That's not how my gift operates. The mess is still there. The blood all over my hands. All over the stacks of notebooks and yellowed newspapers. Which I have delivered weekly. The broken knife still has clumps of flesh attached to the edge of the blade. But my, my gift grows it back. Puts new blood back into his body. Repairs broken bones, seals flayed skin, no blood, no wounds, good as new. Two hands. Four fingers, one thumb on each. Ten appendages in total. They move with a life of their own. I have no control over them as they put back what I've broken. They find me. An undiagnosed brain tumor. The hens dance over the base of the skull. Tumor's gone. One. One breath. A sharp intake of air and Marcus is alive. He blinks from his place on the floor, chair on its side. I smile at him knowing that now he must understand my gift. How I'm misunderstood but all he sees is the blood all around him blood which was in him but has not been replaced he he doesn't understand they never do he sees the broken knife discarded in the dusty fireplace wet bobbles of of clear dust clinging to it then he sees me the scars the blood i see see as he puts it all together the look appears in his eyes again the horror the revulsion and in turn it triggers the rage I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to use my gift for good. Why Why don't they ever understand? Why are they so quick to judge? The fire in my belly reignites, and before I can stop myself, I'm on him again. I'm doing the work that I had just done, killing that which I had given life back to for the second time. Four. Four times the process repeats itself. Life, death, life. On the fifth, I decide I'm going to keep him. Nobody knows he's here. Nobody would think to look. I know he's aware, aware of everything that happens to him. Unlike me, he can feel, and for that I'm envious. He gives me that look, that wide glare. That fearful, haunted expression of absolute hopelessness. Seven. Seven words, he says. Seven words to which I don't have an answer. When will you just let me die? It's a good question. And one that set me to thinking about the response. Fifteen, I tell him. Just before the rage takes over and I kill him again. Fifteen. Fifteen years since I left this place. Fifteen is a good number. Fifteen is a very, very important number. Fifteen plus fifteen is thirty. Thirty is how old my sister would have been this year. Fifteen. Fifteen years since I left this place. A hundred and thirty-one hours. Four hundred and eighty-seven minutes since I last saw the outside world. That's a long time. A long time to think, a long time to wonder, a long time for the human brain to create and invent scenarios. This flat is my sanctuary and my prison, my curse and my gift, but at least now I'm not alone. At least now I have someone to share those years with. And maybe the next 15... Won't be so lonely after all.
This year's 13-day Halloween countdown is in support of Dark Places, Evil Faces, a new collection brought to you by PS Publishing and features New York Times bestsellers, some of horror's most prolific authors, and Vincent Venacaba. Sales of the book Dark Places, Evil Faces goes to the Macmillan Cancer Support. It's a charity based out of the UK that gives aid to people and families suffering from cancer. So, this Halloween, I hope you all enjoy the stories, and I hope we can do some good in the world. Sweet dreams. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. I hope you enjoyed tonight's story, and thank you all for listening. Please help support the channel at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta and make sure to tune in for new horror stories every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday night. Many of the horror authors that I've worked with throughout this channel have all come together to work on one big book series, The Creepypasta Collections Volume 1 and 2. Check them out on Amazon or at any local bookstore near you. Thanks for listening, kids, and sweet dreams. <laughs>